Hey folks, I want to point out some uh, some very interesting information about carbon dating. You know, evolutionists and uniformitarianists base so much of what they believe on these fallacious dating methods. And uh, they're circular logic, and you're going to see that in this article here. Uh, and then I have some important information to provide to you about this sort of thing. Errors are feared in carbon dating, New York Times. Since 1947, scientists have reckoned the ages of many old objects uh, by measuring the amounts of radioactive carbon they contain, new research sh shows, however, that some of the some estimates based on carbon may have erred by thousands of years. Uh, they say uh, it's too soon to know whether the discovery will uh, will seriously upset the estimated dates of events, like the arrival of human beings in the Western Hemisphere. Scientists say, but it's already clear the carbon dating method will have to be recalibrated and corrected in some cases. Scientists at the Lamont Doherty Geologic Laboratory, Geological Laboratory in Columbia University in Palisades, New York, reported today in the British journal uh, Nature that some estimates of age based on carbon analysis were wrong by as much as 3,500 years. Oh, that's putting it mildly. Uh, they arrived at this conclusion by comparing age estimates obtained by using two different methods, analysis of radioactive carbon in samples, and, and determined of the uh, determination of the radio, uh, the ratio of uranium in th to thorium in the sample. In some cases, the latter ratio appears to be a much more accurate group uh, gauge of the age uh, than the customary carbon dating method. They state, in principle, any plant or uh, animal material, uh, including textiles, wood, bones, and leather, can be dated by a content of carbon-14, a radioactive form of carbon in the environment that is incorporated by all living things. Because it is radioactive, carbon-14 steadily decays, decays into other substances, but when a plant or animal dies, now listen to this, this is important, when a plant or animal dies, it can no longer accumulate fresh carbon-14 in the supply and the organism at the time of death gradually is gradually depleted. Since the rate of depletion has been accurately determined, that's the half-life, as about 5730 years, scientists can calculate the time elapsed since it died from carbon-14. Uh, that's false. Uh, and here you're going to learn more about why that's false. But scientists have long recognized that carbon-14 dating is subject to error. Long recognized now. They still use it and say, oh, this is evidence of the Earth being millions of years older, or this plant, this animal being uh, 30,000 years old or 15,000 years old. Their dating methods are, are hogwash. Long recognized that it's subject to error because of a variety of factors, a variety of factors, including contamination by outside sources of carbon. Therefore, they have sought ways to eliminate, uh, to calibrate and correct for the carbon, the carbon dating method. The best gauge is found in dendrochronology, the measure of the age by tree rings. Now here's a problem, that's another problem. Tree ring dating has been also determined as fallacious for a variety of reasons. It's now known that tree rings are not produced annually but by because of seasonal event. A single winter or, or a single annual, uh, a single year could cause a tree to produce more than one ring, and many false rings exist in trees that cannot be used to determine the age of a tree accurately. So if we find a tree that's got 5,000 rings in it, doesn't mean it's 5,000 years old. It might be 1,500 years old, or 12, uh, or 2,500 years old, okay? They know this, and uh, in fact, it, for this reason, tree ring dating is just about being given up as a method for dating anything by scientists today. But here they're still spouting off about tree rings are accurate. They're not. Okay, Accurate tree rings uh, uh, record uh, of an age for an extended peri period extending 9,000 years into the past. That's false. The Earth isn't even 9,000 years old. But the t tree ring record goes further. So scientists have brought to, uh, other indicators of age against which carbon uh, dates can be compared. One such in indicator is uranium-thorium dating used by the Lamont Doherty group. Uranium-238, a radioactive element present in the environment, slowly decays into uh, a form of uh, thorium into th thorium-230. Using a mass spectrometer, 
an uh, accelerator, blah, blah, blah. They say, uh, see here, uh, they, uh, scientists uh, conducted their analysis of samples of coral uh, drilled off the islands of Barbados. Uh, the samples represented animals uh, lived to be uh, various times during the last 30,000 years. Dr. Alan, uh, Alan Zindler, a professor of geology at uh, Uni uh, Columbia University, who's a member of the Lamont Doherty Research Group, said, Age estimates using carbon dating and uh, uranium thorium dating differ, differed only by slight, uh, slightly for periods from 9,000 years ago to the present, but in earlier times, at earlier times, carbon dating dates were substantially younger than the dates were estimated by uranium thorium he said the largest deviation was 3500 years okay for things that are only about 20,000 years old or so they think wow what is the percentage of error there an error a 500 year error a fi in in a 5000 year error in something that's only estimated to uh, believed to be 20,000 years old wow that's a tremendous error Okay. One reason the group believes the uranium thorium estimates to be more accurate than carbon dating is that they produce better matches between known changes in the Earth's orbit and changes in global glaciation. Now, here's the circular logic. This is one of the reasons that dating methods are worthless. Okay. They base their uh, they pick the date that they think is accurate for uranium thorium estimates based upon their presumed age of when the Earth's orbit and global glaciation changed. Do you see the circular reasoning here? Do you see a problem for science here? How is it scientific to base one presumption upon another? This is the, the anti-science, pseudoscience of radiometric dating. You see? Read this carefully again. One reason the group believes the uranium thorium estimates to be more accurate than carbon dating is that they produce better matches between known changes in the Earth's orbit and changes in the global glaciation. How do they know when the Earth's orbit changed and how do they know when global gla glaciation changed? Well, they don't. They estimate it. They speculate. Then they take their assumption from this speculation and they compare it to the dates they get and they pick the date that they want according to uranium thorium or carbon 14 and say that's the one that works for us this is the circular logic of these methods they cannot date anything with radiometric dating these methods are all fallacious none of them are worth anything they cannot accurately date things according to carbon dating of fossils and plants and animals the spreading and receding of great ice sheets lagged behind orbital changes by several thousand years, a delay scientists found hard to explain. Global glaciation took place within 100 or 200 years after the flood of Noah, probably within decades. You see, it was the flood of Noah that created the, the ice, quote, ice age. There's only been one, and it took place just about 4,500 years ago. But you see, here they can't explain the differences, okay? The differences between the changes in the Earth's orbits, that the Earth, you see the flood caused the Earth to tilt, and it's now 23 and a half or so, I think, degrees off due north, and it has a wobble. And this was because the continents rapidly slid across the, continent, uh, the crust of the Earth during the flood of Noah. This put the Earth out of balance. And so what they're looking at is the difference in time between that event, the earth going out of balance because of the flood, and when this ice came raining back down onto the earth from water that ejected out of the earth at the mid-oceanic ridge and create covering the earth in ice, creating the quote-unquote ice age. How much time was that that elapsed? Decades probably is all. But they believe many thousands of years if not millions, okay? This is the, how evolutionist timeline, the geologic column in their head, which doesn't exist in the earth, by the way. It really doesn't exist, only in textbooks. 
This is how they base uh, uh, everything. Their geologic column is a grand, outrageous stretch of time for the age of this earth and everything on it. You see, what really occurred in their mind over periods of many thousands or tens of thousands of years happened in, in uh, uh, decades or less. Do you see? And we could take the entire geologic column and compress it grotesquely, and you know what you end up with? The flood of Noah. Now here's the last bit of it. The group theorizes that large carbon errors resulting from the fluctuations in the amount of carbon-14 in the air. This is very important here. Changes in the Earth's magnetic field would change the deflection of cosmic ray particles streaming towards the Earth from the Sun. Carbon-14 is thought to be mainly a product of bombardment in the atmosphere of cosmic rays. So cosmic ray intensity would affect the amount of carbon-14 in the environment at a given time. 30,000 year limit, the, uh, the Lamont Doherty group says uranium thorium dating not only is more precise than carbon, uh, for carbon dating in some cases, but also can be uh, used to date much older objects. Carbon dating is unreliable for objects older than 30,000 years. Now, you know why? It's for one thing, it proves the Earth is less than 30,000 years old. Here's some information for you. The sun produces carbon-14 in the upper atmosphere, just like they said, and at the same time it decays it, which removes it for the Earth. Because the Earth has not achieved carbon-14 equilibrium, but is instead increasing, which would take approximately 30,000 years, this is creationist information I'm providing you here, which corresponds to their claim, their acknowledgement of a 30,000 year limit, and the explanation of how carbon-14 uh, in, uh, comes into the Earth atmosphere. C-14 verifies the fact that the Earth is less than 30,000 years old because the Earth has not achieved carbon-14 equilibrium. You see, if this Earth was millions of years old, carbon-14 equilibrium would have been achieved a long time ago. Long, long, long ago. This proves the Earth is less than 30,000 years old. Furthermore, the Earth's magnetic force is presently at a value of uh, uh, 8 times 10, 22 amp meter, ampere meters. It was stronger in the past. The decay rate, its, its strength uh, is, de is decaying, and it has an half-life half of approximately 1,400 years. This proves that the Earth is only thousands of a few thousand years old. And furthermore, diamonds are the hardest substance known. And carbon-14 has been found inside diamonds, which evolutionists claim takes uh, hundreds of thousands to millions of years to form in the Earth. Uh, and yet there's carbon-14 inside them. There, there should be no carbon-14 in a diamond if it's even 100,000 years old. So you see, diamonds with carbon-14 in them prove the uniformitarianist idea of the age of this Earth is completely fallacious. Okay. The many problems with these uniformitarianist goon ideas. So, I mean, you have to understand, do you, do you see the circular reasoning here? Now, what kills me, really kills me, is their stating uh, up here, uh, their acknowledgement, almost admission, of their circular reasoning, where they liken their, their imagined age of uh, timeline for when these uh, geologic events occurred, the Earth being uh, out of balance and having a wobble, and uh, and and its orbit changed to these dating methods, and and they're and they're estimating, they're claiming that the difference uh, that the uh, dating method uh, can then be, we can pick which date we want to correspond to when they presume these things took place, and that's the one they go with, and that somehow verifies the age of something. It's completely laughable, people. Dating methods are worthless. The uniformitarianist idea is completely fallacious. This earth is less than 10,000 years old, just like the Bible says it is. The evidences that demonstrate so are numerous. As an end note, just one more problem for the uniformitarianist evolutionist regarding the age of the earth and the age of the universe. It's been observed that the speed of light is decaying, and therefore also the rate of decay for radioactive materials is also changing. And these things have been changing since creation, which was only a few thousand years ago, you see. So check out this information at the URL provided, and you'll see what I'm saying.
Sorry, evolutionists. Sorry, uniformitarianists. The Earth is only a few thousand years old, just like the Bible says.